Today we'll explore some of the most popular 2D physics nodes in Godot, along with one that's less commonly known but equally valuable. A great way to do this is by making a simple game. Foxy needs to collect the cherry and get home, but that angry bird won't let him. Although this game is small, there's a lot to cover here. So I won't be going into great detail of the basics of how I set up the project and why the code works, but instead I'll be focusing on the details of the physics nodes that we'll be using. One of the first nodes we'll be looking at is the static body 2D node. The static body 2D node represents objects that do not move but can interact with other physics bodies. This can be used for walls, platforms or any other immovable object. Now the static body 2D node will not work very well, or not at all, without a collision shape 2D node. The purpose of the collision shape 2D node is to define the shape of a collision area for a parent node. We can add the static body 2D node by clicking on the plus button to add a node, and search for the static body 2D node. Click create and rename it to ground. Then add a collision shape 2D node to it, resize it and position it to the bottom of the scene. Then we create the walls in a similar way and position it on either side of the scene. With that done, we can now get started on the player, and a great node to use for this is the character body 2D node. It has built-in movement handling and can also take advantage of the built-in functions like move and slide that does most of the heavy lifting in terms of physics engine, so that we don't need to write a lot of code. That being said, if you're comfortable coding your own physics, then there's nothing stopping you. By the way, the assets being used in this discussion is called Sunnyland on itch.io. I will put a link to it in the description in case you're interested. Ok, let's set up the player first. Click the plus button and add a character body 2D node. Rename it to Demo Player. A sprite 2D node and a collision shape 2D node and adjust the size to match the player sprite. Then we add a new script to the player. I will use the basic movement script that comes with the character body 2D. I will just make one little change here. That is, I will add my own value for gravity. And just like that, we have a player that can walk on the ground and be blocked by walls. Now, let's make it so that the player can collect the cherry. And to do this, we will use an Area 2D node. An Area 2D node detects overlapping bodies or areas and triggers signals for interactions. It can be used for areas like power-up zones, triggers, or detection areas. And can also emit signals like body entered and area entered. For the player to detect collisions with the cherry, with the player node selected, I will add an Area 2D node and a collision shape 2D node. Rename the Area 2D node to Demo Player Area. Now, let's create the cherry. With the layer node selected, add an Area 2D node, rename it to Cherry and an animated sprite 2D node. Set up the animation by creating a new animation and dragging the sprite frames in and then add a collision shape to the node and adjust it. With the cherry created, let's add a script to the demo player area. And in the inspector, create an unareaEntered signal and connect it to the script. 
In here, we will check if the name of the area that enters is Cherry. Then, call Q3 on the Cherry to remove it from the scene. For the player to detect collisions with the Cherry, it is very important to understand how the collision layers and collision mask work. Now for a small game like this, we could just leave the collision mask and layer mask on layer 1 for both Foxy and the Cherry. But that may not be the case for more complicated games. This is how I typically set it up. The collision layer is where the nodes live, so to speak. And the collision mask is what the nodes are looking to collide with. We created an on-area entered signal on the demo player area that is going to look for the Cherry in this case. Simply put, the collision layer is like the home where the node lives and the collision mask is like the radar it uses to look for other nodes. For this setup, the player is on collision layer 1 and has a collision mask 2. So it's looking for things on layer 2 where the cherry is. The cherry is on collision layer 2 but doesn't need a collision mask because it's not trying to detect anything. This way, when Foxy enters the cherry area, the signal we set up will detect it and the cherry can be collected. That certainly was a lot to take in, but it's really not that complicated. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Don't forget, you can use the timestamps I created to jump back and review, if you want to look at this setup again. Now, have no fear, this is the home stretch. We only need to look at a couple more nodes. Now, this may be a bit unconventional, but I used a static body 2D node, which we already discussed as a fixed point for the bird to swing from using a pin joint 2D node and a rigid body 2D node. Is there a better way to handle this? Definitely. But in this discussion, I wanted to show the use of some physics 2D nodes. This type of setup is more useful for hinged joints like doors swinging or obstacles that typically hang from the ceiling. First, the rigid body 2D node. Its purpose is to represent a physics body that moves according to the physics engine for objects affected by forces, impulses, or gravity. The pin joint 2D node joins two physics body 2D nodes together at a specific point, allowing them to freely rotate, typically used for creating constraints like hinges or fixed joints. An example of this is a pendulum connected to a chain link, or in my case, a bird flying at an arc. A bit of a stretch here, I know. First, we add a 2D node to hold the bird. Then we add a static body 2D node to act as the anchor point for the joint. We will need to add a collision shape as a child of the static body 2D node, although it's not going to be detecting any collisions. Next, we add a rigid body 2D node. This will act as the arm of the pendulum or the arc of the swing, and another collision shape as a child of it and adjust its size. Then we add an area 2D node as a child of the rigid body 2D node. We will use this for the player to detect collisions with the bird. I set up the simple fly animation for the bird using an animated sprite 2D. and then added a collision shape to it and positioned the bird at the opposite end of the rigid body 2D node. This will act as the base of the pendulum. Then I adjusted the size of the collision shape. Now for the node that makes this motion possible. With the node 2D selected, I added a pin joint 2D node and assigned the static body 2D node to node A in the inspector and the rigid body 2D node to node B in the inspector. I made sure to check disabled in the inspector on the collision shape attached to the rigid body so that the player would be able to jump over the bird and not collide with it. I chose to access the bird by unique name in the script that I'm about to create. But before I do, let's set up the collision layers for the bird area. We can set it to collision layer 3 for enemies let's say and do not set a collision mass. But then we need to go back to the player and assign the demo player area collision mask or radar so to speak 
to look for layer mask 3. That way the player will know when it collides with the bird. Now the pendulum script. I won't go into much detail here, but this is how I made the pendulum swing. Basically all the logic is handled in the physics process function, because this is where the physics functions are called. I simply set a max angle for the rotation, an angular speed and a swing direction, and get a reference to the bridge which I decided to call Vulture because of reasons trying to figure out this code. Then, in the ready function, I set the angular velocity equal to swing direction multiplied by the angular speed. In the physics process function, I check if the rotation is greater than the max angle and set the swing direction to minus 1. Then, set the flip H property on the vulture's animated sprite to false. Else if, I do the opposite if the rotation is less than the max angle and then set the angular velocity equal to the swing direction multiplied by the angular speed. This will cause perpetual motion and update the direction that the bird is facing for its lifetime. And finally, I add a panel to hold the text and add the text for the instruction and another for the winning of the game. Then I created this house scene and added an area 2D node to it and set its collision layer to 4 to represent, let's say, information, and go back to the player and add 4 to its collision mass so that it will detect the collision. Then set up a nice background and we're almost done. Back in the demo player area script, I chose to reload the scene if the player collides with the bird area. I know this may look a little strange if you have not used call the food yet. I had to use this because Godot was screaming at me something about removing a collision object node during a physics callback and suggested that I do it with call the food instead. But alas, I've almost run out of time. So we may discuss this in another video. And lastly, if the player collided with the house area, show the correct text and pause the game. And there you have it, an easy explanation of some of the most popular 2D physics nodes and the use of one in a less conventional manner. Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today. Core mechanics with no gimmicks. Well, that pendulum swing was a bit gimmicky, but I do hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload another video. And speaking of my other videos, why not check out one of these videos here? This has been DRAGO Games.